Right now, China's only aircraft carrier is sailing in the contested waters of the South China Sea. The carrier and the group of five other warships were spotted heading into open water to conduct what China calls routine exercises. But neighboring countries say Beijing is trying to send a message about its military capability. Gordon Chang is an Asian analyst and author of the book Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. Sir, thank you for joining us. What do you make of this aggression? I think the important point here is that, of course, China is trying to intimidate its neighbors and the United States, and it shows that the Chinese military has become so much more influential in policy-making circles in Beijing. And that's a bad sign, because military officers have a view of the world that is sharply different from that of not only the countries in the region, but, of course, in Washington as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting to juxtapose it. It happens on a day when you have um, the president having bilateral meetings with the Japanese prime minister today uh, around Pearl Harbor, sort of closing the book on this chapter of the relationship between Japan and the U.S. But at the same time, you look at what's going on with China and, and how it has become, is it fair to say, one of the lead aggressors in the region? I mean, I guess you'd have to also look at its relationship with Korea and, and Korea with its neighbors. Well, absolutely. You know, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is not apologizing to the United States, but the U.S. and Japan, as you say, have closed the book on World War II. Um, Japan has so many times apologized to the Chinese for World War II, right. but Beijing won't let it go. And today we have seen from state media and the foreign ministry some very provocative statements about Abe's visit to Pearl Harbor. So how do you put that in context for our viewers? Because when you look at the aggression that's going on with China, we have a lot of pots that are sort of boiling over all around the world. But if you're looking at the Middle East, looking at what's going on with Russia, how big of a threat, how would you categorize it? Well, China grabbed Scarborough Shoal from the Philippines in 2012 in an act of naked aggression. The United States didn't do anything about that. And so right now, China has sort of enlarged the problem by now starting to say it wants not only the Senkaku Islands from Japan, but also Okinawa and the rest of the Ryukyu chain. This is a country whose territorial ambitions have been expanding because there's been very little pushback from the international community. The one thing about Abe going to Pearl Harbor is that for many Japanese, this is the end, the symbolic end of World War II. It means that Japan can now act independently in the region to defend itself and to help the United States. So that is a very good thing because Japan and the U.S., a very powerful combination. At the same time, I mean, we see the temperature rising between the future administration and China. Donald Trump has talked a lot about trade relations with China, but he's also addressed this very specific issue of sort of the, the island grab, the military aggression. How do you think his relationship will be different? Well, uh, Trump is basically saying to the Chinese, look, you know, you challenge American administrations in their first month. You did that with President Bush. You did it with President Obama. What uh, Trump is doing is he's saying the United States is setting the agenda, not China. And he's doing it before he took the oath of office. So this is an important change in the relationship. Basically, he's saying to the Chinese, I'm not afraid of you. And that's an important message that we need to get across to Beijing. Yeah, Gordon Chang, thanks for your time today. Thanks, Melissa.